Hello, here we are, um, week three of Help, and I'm your host, Abby. I should look at that microphone there so you can see me. Um, welcome along, Help. Goodness me, I've got to remember each week how to explain help. It is basically a show where I have a talk about life as parent, as a person, um, and just dealing with life situations and children, um, all that all that goes with that, and your wellness as a person, as an individual, and as a couple, or, or with your village as well, and keeping us... Oh, that's what I was thinking. It is basically... The things you wish someone had said to you mm-hmm. or you'd had the conversation about and then you find out in the moment and wish you'd kind of known a little bit sooner. That's probably a better way to find out about it. But if you want to read a little bit more about help and what it has to offer, um, go to the arrowfm.co.nz and go to the program schedule um, menu button and then scroll down and find my pretty face and the word help. And it's there. And my contact details. So if you have any thoughts or questions or you would love a particular topic to be spoken about, then flick me an email. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love your feedback. And I just would like to be able to talk about what is relevant to people now. Um, Right. So last week we started our two-part. Actually, I've now decided it's probably going to be four weeks. Um, (laughs) discussion on (laughs) low motivation because low motivation is quite a big topic to really talk about in a good way and feel like maybe just myself that I really understand what low motivation is and what you can do etc etc so I have a wonderful friend with me here today and I was reminded this morning that this week we celebrated um Women's Day, International Women's Day. It was like on Tuesday and I'm a little bit behind the ball there. So what better way to celebrate on Help Today with my lovely friend Lydia. So welcome Lydia to Help. It's great to have you here as my first guest. And how about you introduce yourself a little bit and share something interesting or fun or special or whatever's on your mind. Woohoo, open can. Do I look that way as well? Um... Uh, it, it'll turn and when whatever one turns because there's two here one there one there whatever one turns all right <laughs> got the training wheels on here guys so this is all just new I feel like I should be like have a seatbelt on and like I'm in a plane or something um so thank you so much firstly Abby for inviting me it's such an honor to be here today um yeah a bit of a new experience but just a little bit of background on me so my name is Lydia Guild I am 47 years old. I have a husband and two teenage children. Um, I'm an occupational therapist by trade and have been doing that job, goodness, 25-ish years now. Um, We have, uh, my husband and I have a CrossFit gym, so we're all about working with people, training, motivating, and that's my OT, occupational therapy degree, is um, all about that as well. So helping people set goals, achieve things that they want to in life, motivating, encouraging, Um, have a health and wellness business as well. And yeah, that's all, yeah, that's just my heart, my my cup is full when I get to encourage and help people really. That's what I love to do. Wow, that's really cool. It's nice to, I I think it's nice to hear your motive, like what you just said last, that it fills your cup being able to Mm. help people and serve people and encourage people Um, because I guess that's why you can keep doing all those things yeah (laughs) true yeah yeah because I I mean yes things get draining hey but it's it's about um acknowledging what does fill your cup and making sure you keep the cup full yeah yeah that's (laughs) right oh cool all right well before we get into um you know the grit of the show I think we will start with a song because it will just make me feel more relaxed and who doesn't love good music? Let's go. <laughs> so this, who I'm going to play for you now, his name is called Gregory Porter. He's a new found musician for me um, and I discovered him, as if I'm some professional, I discovered him on the Royal Variety Show <laughs> over Christmas when I watched it. Yeah, and he's cool. I think the genre is jazz. I'm not so good with genres um but this is um Gregory Porter and his song Dry Bones so I will 
play that. I won't die, won't bury, won't sink. Cause love is the spirit I drink. I'll be free in the morning light. Cause your touch is the medicine of life. There's a dance to this be less shake. Every move fill my body awake. There's a sound you and me are one. And the home is the rhythm I'm drum. Is your soul in the desert? I managed to do that fine. <laughs> it's do you know what? It's only one extra button, <laughs> but it's enough to really throw me because yeah. the other other two weeks it was just I had two buttons. Uh, now I've got a third one oh, because I'm here. Yeah. Oh, okay. To make sure I turn your microphone on. <laughs> That's right. I'm, I'll get there by the end of it. I'll be like sweet. Yeah. Um, you just need to have one with what. Three guests. Oh, How would that be? I'll just be like looking down here all the time. Like, are you more like a DJ? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just get someone else to do the buttons for me. <laughs> um, cool. Okay, so that was. Um, oh, I haven't even stopped. Oh, I have stopped my music. Um, that was Dry Bones by Gregory Porter. And I just realized um, someone else called Troy Miller. I don't know who Troy Miller is, which is probably why this song we was just saying to Lydia sounds a little bit different to some of his other stuff which is a little bit more jazzy what will be interesting is that Hannah Reese, you know my friend Hannah Reese in Auckland who's the singer beautiful singer she'll be listening to this later and she'll okay. be like no Abby that's not what it is <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Okay, so last week we started part one, low motivation, and we talked about um, what is low motivation. I also to- talked about the difference between laziness and low motivation because I thought that that was quite important because I know for me, when I was going through the real struggle of low motivation, I mistook it as that I was a lazy person. And so from doing some of the readings and research, the conclusion I came to is that laziness is a choice, whereas low motivation is a response to something that's happening to us. And I think 
I've decided for myself that <laughs> both of them have a place for a reason. Mm. Sometimes I have found as a parent, or probably I've done it all through my life, I I will make a lazy choice. So my example last week was that I chose not to vacuum properly because I wanted to just chill out once the kids had gone to bed and thought, you know what, I can't be bothered. I'm just going to be lazy here and we'll do it later on in the week. And for me, I think that if I'm making a choice like that and it's not going to impact Michael or it's not going to impact my children, I'm happy with that because it's allowing me to have a bit of rest. Mm. So I think laziness has a small place, but obviously if you choose lazy choices all the time, you end up conditioning your brain to become a a lazy person. (laughs) Although, can I challenge that though and say, because one of the things I was keen to talk about today is our our energy, because we've only got so much energy in a day, right? Yeah. We need to actually be really careful about how we utilise that, where we want to put our energy, where the focus wants to be on that day. And it's actually okay to say today... I'm going to do half my vacuuming because that's what I've got the energy and the willpower and the want to do. And I'm going to nail the rest of it tomorrow or the next day. And I don't actually think that's lazy. I think that is good management. It's good, eh? Because it's just a shift in the language, really, isn't it? It's just a shift in that perspective of making a negative choice for my benefit to actually... What you're saying is I'm making a positive choice about how much energy I'm spending for my benefit. And I guess the benefit of shifting our perceptions and our, and like you said, challenging some of those thoughts is that it allows us to not beat ourselves up because that will be often my downfall is that I'll think, oh, I'm so lazy. Yeah, well, you've come away from that situation (laughs) going, I made a lazy choice. Yeah. But actually, you made the call to want to spend some chill mm, nice. time, which is actually an important part of your yeah. day as well. Yeah. Spend some time with your husband. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's cool. And then for low motivation, with what I was reading, is the difference is that it is a response because of something. So whether it is mental health or whether it's you've lost someone or there's been... Um, Sometimes I find even a positive change, like when we shifted houses, that's a positive change, but then afterwards there was a down of low motivation. And I think for me, I'm not the most adaptable with change, so that Mm. can happen quite often on big things. So again, the kind of conclusion I got to with the things I was reading was that when there's an impact on us and we're we're exhausted or whatever low motivation comes out because it's a response and it's saying you need something something's a little bit off here whatever that is Mm. Um, and it's not just depression and anxiety because I I know that when I was walking with depression you're always told it's a symptom of depression but then when I was reading what some of these um, professionals were saying I was like oh this isn't just depression and anxiety everyone experiences low motivation at some point in their life and it's multiple different reasons so we talked about triggers and then we talked about consequences those kind of negative consequences of when low motivation has such a hold on us Mm. and how that impacts our world and our relationships and our being etc what I didn't do last week was unpack it I kind of just put it out there these are my thoughts this is what I've read and I thought today we could unpack some of that like what you're already starting to do of challenging some of that information that's out there challenging our thoughts and also um, what we can do practically to move through and away from low motivation and also being okay when we recognize it that's kind of what I was thinking. Sounds good. I like the word unpack. Cool. I did too. It just came out there. <laughs> Who knows what's gonna, what we're going to unpack. But yeah. Let's, let's see what um, my first question that I thought could just kind of kick us off. Um, oh, no. that's It's actually my second question. I'm not going to ask the first question. Um <laughs> Well, the first question was, tell me what you think about low motivation. But I think you will do that naturally anyway as you're talking. So, um, And you've already kind of started to. You can Um, ask me again at the end if I haven't. Yeah. (laughs) Actually, you didn't answer my question. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay. How does low motivation go from something that can be a warning to us about our needs to an unhealthy place of isolation and distress? Mm. Yeah, big, big question. Great question. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> ah, thank you. Um, and I think for me, it is about 
it's about having the awareness. So anything, you know, like a, the snowball effect, hey. So a snowball starts off as a snowflake and then it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and suddenly it's a giant ball which is bowling things out of control and it is the one in control. Um, so acknowledging it early on is great and starting to have that awareness and put things in place to avoid it becoming the massive big snowball. Um, yeah, does that kind of... It does. I think the snowball um, is a really good image. I think most things can snowball out of control. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And if, just because something, though, is a snowball does not mean it, you know, oh, my gosh, it's the snowball, now it's too late. So snowballs can be dealt with as well. Yeah. They can be broken up again into little snowballs um, and individual snowflakes again if we want to. However, yeah, interesting that... that if we're talking about snow, um, because the snowflake would snowball would perhaps be a slightly different version after the massive event, whatever it might look like, you know. So maybe it's not about it having the expectation to going back to exactly what that little snowflake started off like as well. Mm. It's a Just great that little thought. Great, <laughs> great image, and I think um, I can really relate that to my own journey with depression. Mm. It didn't just happen. There were, looking mm. back now after doing the work with a psychologist, we can see how it got there yes. and it snowballed. And then afterwards, I'm not the person I was before the journey. And that's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's great, I think there's great things about it. Yeah, um, yeah. I love that picture, a snowball <laughs> and then a, a beautiful snowflake because mm. they're really pretty snowflakes. They are amazing and every single snowflake in the entire world is different from another and that just blows my mind. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, it's cool. Oh. Okay, so I guess like if I'm thinking about someone who's listening to this and is thinking, man, I really think I'm struggling with low motivation. Mm. How would you recognize it? Mm. You know, because we've talked about, you know, laziness being a choice of not wanting to do something that you actually do have the energy for, but you just don't want to do it because you can't be bothered. Um, whereas low motivation, I know for me, I felt like the energy had been sucked out of me. Like, in all my desires and passions mm. and things I loved doing was just gone. Um, and when you're in that space, it's really hard to recognize that you're in that space because you've been in there probably longer than you realize. Mm. So how do you recognize what would be the signs when you can think, this is not the life I want to live. I'm not okay with this. Mm. What would you, what would we look look for? What would be the flags well, I, th I think probably you answered that last week when you talked about what it was like for you. Um, but yeah, and sometimes we don't like, we can't, we're, the inside is gone. Like we're so entrenched and ingrained and this is how I am now. And that's where your village, eh, your tribes are mm -hmm. making sure that you have got some peeps, You've whether it's the family, whether it's the person that makes the coffee down the road, whether it's... <laughs> The people at a gym, if you go to one, just having some, tr somewhere, having a tribe um, to help perhaps help you recognise that. Because um, I do, yeah, I do see people that are so entrenched. I don't, I think they're almost at a place where they are not going to be able to recognise that for themselves. Um, yeah, and that's not a good place to be. So, have, you know, putting yourself out there in the uncomfortable, exposing yourself to others. Um, and, you know, the, the message out there at the moment with COVID and isolation and all of that is, re this is really strong. It's go and knock on the neighbour's door, go and see that person. Um, and I think that's why, you know, just, yeah, because yeah. we're, not, we're not meant to be suffering alone and, yeah. Yeah. Um, that point you made about, uh, it, was, it wasn't really a point, you made that comment about how you see some people who are really entrenched in it and obviously with your job mm. you've had to help people kind of identify and come out of it and do some planning and some goal whatever so. you do which you'll talk about soon mm. um one thing i love to try and talk about with things like this is how we can help the support people mm. because it's um it can be draining for them sometimes when yeah. they're the support person and the the 
often the question is, is I don't know what to say. I don't know what I'm allowed to ask. I don't know what the boundary is. And I haven't necessarily been in that position, but I've spoken with friends who have said, I don't know if I'm allowed to broach this topic with you because it might set you off or because mm. there's that fear of not wanting to make it worse. Yeah. So what would be your advice to the support people? Yeah, that's a really tricky one. And I th- it's about it's about reading the person. Like, I don't think you can black and white that. Um, so it's about being with your person and going with your gut really you know um, you want to be able to obviously help pull them out of this so it is actually going to some of the hard places and I know in my life looking back some of those hard conversations people have had to have for me they didn't feel pretty or nice or comfortable at the time but I am so grateful for them looking back now and um, yeah getting pulled out of that rut and kind of helps you do the pivot and recognize some change and have the awareness and yeah, so I think I would encourage people to not actually be afraid. Go with your gut. Um, take somebody else as well if you need to. Like maybe having a couple of people yeah, might just make it feel a bit safer if, if need be. Yeah. Um, but also perhaps it's not about having to tell and to do and to, it's actually just being there initially, being there for that person um, making them a cup of tea, you know, walking them around their garden, making their bed if they <laughs> just, you know, getting spending time in that loving zone, um, and then as the rapport and the, I suppose the relationship builds, um, in that setting, then start to have some of the more difficult conversations, and just delivering it in love, eh? Yeah, I think that gentleness, being mm. gentle and loving. I think there's a very old school approach to topics like this where it's kind of like, ah, pull up your boots and get on with it, you know, Mm. like just. (laughs) Yeah. But again, everyone's different. And I'm actually just, as you say, talking, I'm just thinking of a situation I was in last week with an employer and a, a, a employee, employer, and it's my job in my OT role to support people back to work after injuries. And one particular person's just been having a very difficult time in their workplace, working part-time, reduced hours. Um, It's just been tricky on many levels. And I had to get really, really direct in this meeting. Like, I actually had to just... And I apologised to her afterwards and I said, I felt like I was the parent talking to the children. And she just looked at me in the eye and she said, thank you so much. Like, and So obviously I just read it that this is how I need to communicate in this time went with my gut and a a really good outcome. So that was an interesting thing to be on the other side of. Yeah, Yeah. I can imagine. Hmm. (laughs) So it's it's being able to know um, that you've got people who can advocate for you. Definitely, yeah. And I liked that, you know, when you were talking about the support people going around and and doing jobs and things, I know that's what I really loved, like when mum would come over and would you know be in the kitchen and she'd just start you know pottering around in the kitchen and chatting away and then I would start to join her I, just mm. not because she had said oh get up here and cook dinner no expectations yeah it yeah. was just oh okay what shall I get some veggies ready for you and then she'd just start talking to me about her day yes and before I knew it I just naturally moved into yeah. that space and Good. started yeah. to help without even thinking about it yeah yeah because I think for me it was spending time with someone I felt safe with and I was distracted too because she's telling me about her day. <laughs> I'm not thinking about myself. No. And then yeah. dad's over terrorising the children. So <laughs> yeah, that's a win-win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's all right. All right. Good. Let's get into um, what we really want to talk about today. And that is what can we do mm. to combat low motivation and what can we do to move through it the way I kind of envision it it'd be interesting to see what your thoughts on that is is it's like I think say I've experienced something and I've noticed that there's low motivation Mm. and I think okay Abby why why are you feeling low what's Mm. going on here let's take a step back and figure out what's going on and then there's a process after that that has to happen Um, and that's what I think we're both really excited to talk about right now. Mm, we are. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Um, yeah, yeah. So, and I mean, there's so many answers. 
to that question. And me as an occupational therapist, obviously I spend time with people in their initial setting and we assess. So we assess, 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 and that's our job is to kind of help nut out what is going on here. What is the root cause of this presentation? Um, and there can be so many things. And as we were talking, as we were walking here, hey, we were talking about sometimes you're just tired. The newborn baby stage, um, you know, sleep deprivation. You can be feeling a little bit unmotivated because <laughs> you're tired. Um, so there's four kind of key things that I like to look at and consider. Um, and they are nutrition. So what are you actually fueling your body with? Absolutely massive. Rest slash sleep. How, how are you sleeping? How are you resting? Um, again, that community thing, your tribe. Like what? who are you putting in your world to... Um, do fun stuff with and maybe not the not so fun stuff and movement how are you moving your body you know so those are all things that we can start to look at trying or implementing and it may be a big part of one of it may be all of those things all of those areas are contributing you may have two of them nailed really really well and you're neglecting the others so or it might be just be one of yeah Okay, yeah. cool. All right, well, we're going to hit another song. Um, <laughs> I'm going to cope with all these buttons. I mean, it's three. Just And then when we get back from the song, we are going to hit Lydia's list and then delve into what those points look like for us. So oh, I think I might – I was going to do A Little Bit of Love by J.P. Cooper, but I'm feeling like a little bit of, like – upbeat happiness <laughs> so I've got Sia on here with her song Together which I think is pretty popular she did a, a movie called Music never watched it don't know anything about it but this is what it's from <laughs> all right so here we go
Okay, that was a lot smoother that time. Oh. Look at that. Pause. Mm. Button button. Okay. <laughs> Unlike when I first pressed play, I, I muted the um, the soundtrack. <laughs> Okay, so that was Sia with um, Together, quite a fun, upbeat thing. I think it's nice to have that fun, upbeat music, especially when we're talking about topics that can really weigh people down Mm. and can be really negative. And it's just, there is a a, a, a clinical psychologist I follow on Instagram. Her name is Dr. Sarah Balbooth. Have you seen her? No. Um, she's, She's based in Auckland and she's put out a couple of journals um, using the CBT and a couple of the other therapies and the beautiful journals. And what I enjoy about her posts, because she obviously understands the topic of mental health and she also does courses on modern day mothering, like motherhood and Brilliant. helping you through that, is her posts are always smiley, mm. positive and not cheesy, mm. but just positive like a breath of fresh air when you look at her posts Mm. and they're not intense and they're not full on and I think that's I like that because for someone who's feeling really negative um when you've got that stuff coming into you yes it's it's like a breath of fresh air it's such a good term eh? yeah 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 breath of fresh air I like it okay Mm. so Lydia take the floor so we while we while we were um playing the song I actually had a little thought about I'd love to just cover the whole realm of, um, like, one of the, in my opinion, one of the things I see is that we're not great at giving ourselves permission to move out of the zone and into something more healthy. Um, I see it a lot, and I see it in myself. And so I think, and a lot of that actually comes hand in hand, actually, with our thoughts and our words, which then become our actions. So it actually starts with our thoughts, Um, so just being really, really conscious, I think, of your vocab, of the words that you are using, and the words that we're using come out of, are born out of the thoughts that we're thinking, aren't they? So being aware of those, um, and there's, um, quite a good little phrase to think about is, so what you want to avoid are soft words, which are the maybes and the sometimes and I'll possibly and, you know, I might do that. Um, also avoid the hard ones like the musts and I have tos but use the the sort of the in in between so I can I choose to um, those are the words where the phrases where you are the one in control so if you can start thinking the thoughts like that and then voicing the words like that that is really really powerful but when it comes to permission one of the things I see a lot is that we particularly us women but everyone we're flogging ourselves. So we work, we do family, we do husband, wife, you know, we, we're filling our days with stuff, all this stuff and this do and I have to and the, you know, those hard words, um, hard phrases. So, um, and we, we have things that we know that we love. So for someone, it might be getting out the, the easel and the paints and doing a painting. It might be going for it. For me, it's the trails. I absolutely love trail running. So spending time on the trails might be meeting a coffee, meeting a friend for a coffee. And we tend to do, 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 um, hoping that one day we might just get through all those things and just randomly have this little gap of time that we can fit that thing that we love in one day, just, you know, might just happen. So I think let's be really brave and actually, vroom, turn that around and chuck those, get our schedule, get our week, our day, and go, right, I'm going to spend that hour on Tuesday painting or, you know, whatever it is for you. So put those things in first and then the vacuuming, as you mentioned, but, you know, the other stuff that actually probably can wait and doesn't necessarily fill our cup. <laughs> um, those things, they'll happen. Like, they get done, you know. So the more we put off the, the cup-filling stuff and the stuff that we love, like what? It, we're not here on this earth just to flog ourselves and get. We're not going to be sitting on at the end of our life going, oh, "I'm so glad I got all those vacuumings done and did all the ironing every day or whatever," you know. Um, Unless it's your passion. <laughs> yeah. And I do know a couple of. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So choosing the thing, um, choosing those things that it is for you, and giving yourself permission. Have a chat with a friend. 
and um, and say, so when am I, you know, help me put this into my week. When am I going to do it? Because if you then get everything else done with the sense of high achievement and joy, you know, it bring yeah, it brings you joy. Um, the things that we love. So that permission is huge. Anyway, that's not what I was going to say. So. <laughs> Yeah, but I think it's so important just listening to it, you know, because I mean, I say I I didn't do the radio show because I thought I knew everything. I know that I don't know much about anything, but (laughs) I have opinions about stuff. But as a parent who's in this zone, like that's something I find so valuable sitting here and listening. And if I hadn't done this show and invited you on here, I wouldn't have heard that, you know, gem of (laughs) gold there. And I'm already sitting here thinking, like you said, it's challenging the thoughts. Mm. And for me, my journey is, re- like we were talking out there before, struggling with anxiety and have had to work through some pretty intense anxiety thought processes. And when it comes to the home and I obsess over the cleanliness of the house or the folding the washing, all the things you talked about, mm. I do actually can see how stepping back and saying hang on Abby give yourself permission not to do this yes because you're not actually helping anyone here you're not helping yourself you're not helping your family and everyone's just getting upset and it's turning really negative and unfun so I think that it's so the point you're making about as people but I mean you know as parents it's easy to forget to step back and do these things thought you know it's almost like thought exercises Mm. because we're so busy thinking oh we need to do this for the kids and for the house and for work and like you said flogging ourselves with all the stuff Mm. and responsibilities that yeah training our brain to step back and say actually no I'm giving myself permission yep to leave the washing for tomorrow and no one cares Mm. (laughs) then it's messy yeah (laughs) And for me, it's every time I do the trail run, why do I not do this more often? I just feel so invigorated. Took my mum into the Petuna Chasm yesterday. It was just amazing. Like, it's time with family, time on the trail, time in the bush and the chasm, you know. Like, today I'm just buzzing. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And again, I always get to the end of days like that and go, why don't I do that more often? Yeah. And yes, my work didn't get done yesterday. The vacuuming didn't, you know, things didn't get done, but that's actually okay. Yeah. Yes, good stuff. Okay, so the four things before we covered, nutrition, rest, your tribe, and movement. So let's have a look at nutrition, and this is a really interesting one for me. This is not a radio show about gut health, but just want to quickly do a little um, blurb about, you know, your gut is your second brain, Um so when we look at food, we want to be looking at things that fuel us. That um, and for me, I'm a I do CrossFit, so I like to work out in the gym every day. I want my performance to be as good as it can be. So what I put in my body makes so much of a difference. And for me, um, I know I realised probably a couple of years ago I um, reduced. I actually went 30 days without having any gluten, and absolute game changer so I don't I wouldn't say I have a intolerant I'm not gluten intolerant but I just know now when I have gluten in my gut I feel sluggish I don't feel motivated I quite happily just not do whatever needs doing um so just by avoiding that my motivation can stay high yeah so that was huge um but I think just think you know our bodies are not designed for highly processed food so thinking about nice um, you're sticking to your whole foods, putting in good stuff, avoiding the junk. You know, yeah, people know that stuff, hey? Yeah. Yeah, and I think what's good about the nutrition when I'm thinking about, you know, the parents on the go, and I'm thinking about, you know, the, the stay at home parent. Um, sometimes we're the worst at eating. Mm. <laughs> We either eat the leftovers yeah. of the children. And so busy thinking about what goes in the kids' lunch boxes yep. and the Don't even think about yourself. Yeah. And one of the the best things we I can't remember how we came across it was um preparing that lunch. my lunch or if you're the stay at home parent or actually both parents 
prepare a really good lunch the night before mm. you know um it was michael's job in our house so he does all the lunches and so the night before good. prepares good lunches um and i that meant then he knew i was eating yes. and i knew i i knew he was eating like he never not eats so that was never a problem with michael but yeah i think that's a really good point to make is that nutrition needs to be a priority yeah. for us and yeah. there's ways and tips and tricks that we can do to make sure that we're eating good food throughout the day that's mm-hmm. going to give us the energy like almonds was a game changer for me Right. Um, yeah. I think it was you actually I did talk to you about who almonds. told me to have almonds. And um, did we talk about the farm? So I it think so. That you, so it's about just four or five. Yeah. Or six. Yeah. Yeah, and that just in the afternoon because there's always that one part of the day yeah. where you're really peckish. Yeah. And well, I am. <laughs> um, but the almonds, yeah, right. it was awesome. Just that little boost gets me through. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Very good. Yeah, and recently I so having coffee and saw the cheese scone just glowing at me. <laughs> Had it and just rest of the day, it's like I, I didn't feel sore or sick, or I just felt ugh, sluggish. Eh? I'll be bothered yeah. doing stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's that whole why do we, you know, choose not to put that stuff in, um, knowing that it's not going to serve you well. Mm. Yeah. So that can be a cool, putting bad food or food that does not agree with your gut into your body can look like low motivation. Yeah. How's that for a statement? That's a really good statement right there. Yeah. Yeah, really good. So, yeah, maybe if low motivation is something you're struggling with, um, have a look at the diet Mm. and start there. Mm. See if the diet needs to change and if there's a lift with shifting what's going in. Yeah, lots of things that can be tweaked. Another whole show. Yeah. (laughs) I know, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, right, we need, now need to do a show on nutrition <laughs> yeah. and one on breaking bad habits. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, the next thing on the list is rest slash sleep. Um, and again, this, this could be another whole. So as an occupational therapist, I'm often working with people with neurological injury, so car accident, head injury, concussion, that sort of... Um, and the biggest thing those people are dealing with is what we call fancy word fatigue, so the tiredness. Um, so lots of education about management of that. And for some of those people, they will never have the same amount of energy that they did prior to their injury. So it's about how do I manage this going forward? How do I keep my energy, use my energy well? You know, how I think we started with that sort of we've only got a set amount of energy. So we need to be really smart about how we utilise that during it, the day. One really nice phrase is to, th- I, I think if you're in the low motivation zone, is to think the phrase, what can I do, what's going to be the best one hour of my day? Okay, so you don't need to look at the whole day and suddenly go, right, I have to fight or put up this facade and pretend to be motivated and have all this high energy, but just go, okay, this is my day. I'm going to choose one hour of that day and it's going to be my best hour and how am I going to spend that? And that, I think, we've talked, um, not today, but another day about control, eh? like you having that control over that small amount of time zone. Um, So that, I kind of diverted, but um, one of the really good tips to manage energy, because again, Low motivation might look, might be a result of the fact that you're actually just tired. You are not getting enough rest. Um, so one of the ways to manage that is to, we call it fatigue management, and our bodies have this natural lull in that early afternoon stage. Hey, So if you've ever been at a conference, <laughs> no one wants to be the speaker, the after lunch speaker, because everyone's yawning their little hearts out, nodding off, wanting to looking out the window. You know, how much goes in in that hour after lunch <laughs> before the next coffee? And <laughs> um, so, a really great way to manage fatigue, and it's not always possible. Obviously, people at work, and but it, those that can, is to not uh, be conscious of that natural lull and use it. Think of siestas in Europe. They all the doors have got their shut and they're all having off having their nanas so why can we not do that and there are actually a lot of people that do because that's what I've told them they need to do 
Um, so we call it fatigue management, call it siesta, call it nana nap, whatever it might be. And it's not just, I'm going to go and lie down and just sleep till I wake up, because that might not be till five o'clock. <laughs> but to be, again, really in control, set an alarm, and it may be 30 minutes, 40 minutes, it might be 10. Um, so use that zone, have a rest, be really proactive when you wake up. When the alarm goes off, you'll want to probably smash it and turn it off and keep having a sleep maybe it's gone off I'm getting up and I'm going out the door to get some fresh air or I'm going you know do something a little bit active to kind of get yourself back to wakefulness and where you go again so that's a really good way to again look at this is how much energy I've got during the day if I'm resting in this zone I'm not using up energy and I'm actually filling my tank to get through that later part of the day a bit more proactively so that could be a yeah, I think that's great, eh? And, and I think I can really see how falling back on that, giving permission to ourselves to do that, will really help with being able to build that in. Yes. Um, a lot of people yep. put, it, they put themselves in that, oh, that would be lazy if I, you know. So I, have, I spend a lot of time saying, you give yourself permission, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. permission to do it because it's about looking after you. Yeah. And, you know, 30 minutes, if it's going to put you in a much better headspace for the rest of the afternoon and bedtime yeah then, yeah Absolutely. it's worth it isn't it yeah and I used to live up in the in Northland and I'd do I'd service the far north I'd do these big sort of 12 hour days just me and my car driving the things I saw amazing but in that afternoon I would get tired I'd start because I left early um again I had to eat really well but I'd start oh so I'd get I'd just find somewhere that I felt confident pulling over, lock the doors, set an alarm, and it was, for me, it was 10 minutes. I just need, and I'd go straight off, boom, 10 minutes later, whoa, jump out the car, go for a little bit of activity, and off I go again. And I'd have to ring the next person to say, you know, going to be a little bit late, but again, I'm in control of this. I'm not going to be driving if I'm feeling um, like I'm about to drive off the road or something. Yeah. Yeah. So that was... um. That was an area that time that I used to do it really well. And I love, one of my favourite things in the weekend is to go and have a little, a nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really okay with that. Some yeah. people were like, I never sleep during the day. Like, they think it's evil. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose they think it's lazy, hey? Yeah, and I guess it depends where that's come from, whether you've kind of, you know, been in a family where you just don't do that stuff, you know? Like, what is the family culture mm. or what is the expectation you have on yourself? So it really is being able to break some of those, you know, those thoughts mm. and those habits and those belief systems that we have and the culture that we've grown up in and reforming a culture for ourselves yeah. that works with us and with our families right. to be the healthiest version that we can be. Yeah. 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 Give yourself permission, eh? Your permission to do you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't ever remember my parents sleeping during the day. <laughs> So I've somehow been okay with taking that on. <laughs> I've been holding this back because yeah. mum watches, mum listens to this. Dad hasn't listened to my radio oh, yet. and He'll probably it, listen to them all back to back. Or it'll be this one that he listens to. <laughs> yeah. And I've dobbed Hi, him Shane. in. Yeah. <laughs> Dad's never had a problem having a nap at any time of the oh, day when he needs it. <laughs> see? Good man. Yeah. <laughs> that is you controlling you. Yeah. <laughs> never be ashamed of that. Thank you, Dad, for being a great role model. <laughs> Um, so the next one, your tribe, do we feel like we've sort of covered that, I think? Yeah, I think so, um, yeah. definitely, and if not, I can, like, we can talk about it in another time, because I think, again, like you say, all of these little topics definitely have mm. an episode in themselves, where you can talk about how to build a village, and why a village is important, and... yeah. Yeah. Funny, can I tell you, share a funny little yes, story that you can. popped into my brain? So I was, <laughs> I was, what was I making? An omelette, I think, and cracked the egg in the bowl, and a little bit of eggshell fell in the bowl. So, what do you know the best way, Abby? I'm asking you this question. Do you know the best way to get the eggshell, that little bit of shell, out? I will say, no, I don't, because I can't stand eggs. Oh, so, so you're not. But you must make cakes or. Uh, but it's very quick and. <laughs> Apologies, family, but if a little bit of shell gets in there, you eat it, okay? Oh, you don't retrieve it. <laughs> I mean, if it's a big piece of shell, yeah, I don't want them to yeah, crunch down. Just it. Fall it out. But if it's a small, insignificant piece, okay, you're not too worried. 
The self, oh. Okay. No. I- okay. This might change your world then. So what you do is get the rest of the shell, use the big piece of a shell, right. and you just glide it up to that little crack, yeah. that little bit, yeah. and it just sucks on and you pull it out. So none of this ah. kind of teaspoon or trying to fingers and it's going the other way. So you're using the sh- and I and as I was doing this, because this is what I always do. As I was doing this, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like your tribe. It's mm-hmm. like the connection. We need the this is the, the the big part of the shell is the tribe, and the tribe comes in and it just helps zap um, pull that little yeah that little bit that's alone and needs to be back together with the. <laughs> Cool image. It's like, oh. that's really cool. What the egg shell connection? Yeah, I will try it now. Mostly because that if I bake a cake or something, and I'm not just talking about my home family, I'm talking about my extended family, like yeah, Philip yeah, yeah. and Brett and their families. Yes. And if they've listened to this, they're not going to want to eat my cakes they're anymore. Like, it's, is it's there an egg shell in here? But now they'll know that you know this. I thing. know this, and I'm yeah, returning the no. little shell back to its tribe. Boom. Yeah. Because we all need a tribe. <laughs> All right, and the last one that I've got on my list is movement. And I specifically called it movement because people that know me know that, yes, I am a CrossFit freak. Like, I love my weights, my moving, working out every day, high intensity, boom, that's me, happy place. But that's not everyone, and I need to remember that. Um, And Matt and I have been really specific with our children just because him and I love that. We don't want to shove that down their throats or when and if they want, you know. So for Bella, she's about team sports. She loves basketball and um, volleyball and, yeah. Um, So it's finding your thing. And for me, one of the things that, one of the ways I've found to move when my motivation is low is, and it might be that I'm just alone working in my office. I've been spending three hours of phone, computer reports. You know, like that's actually not really very exciting for me. <laughs> so I just sometimes I need a bit of, oh, let's go. So putting on a bit of music, one song, and having a little dance party for one. Nice. Like just moving, you know? Yeah. Um, and where you go, the dogs will join me. And, <laughs> so, <laughs> and then, and I've, yeah, the lungs are, everything's had a bit of a, a good um, little workout, and off you go again. So I love it. It could be Pilates, it could be a gym, it could be going for a walk with a friend. Um, yeah, there's so many things. But again, using those I choose to, the, not the I have to's, and I, um, yes, it's good to do, but find out what it looks like for you, what you enjoy, because it's got to be something you enjoy. Yeah. Got to I choose joy it, hashtag I choose joy <laughs> Every, yeah, um, and yeah, so that that is huge for motivation. Yeah, cool. And I think too, adapting to what your life is like, because when you've got young kids, movement can look different. Mm. It can be dancing That's to high thing. five or the wiggles, because yes. at least you're moving. Yes, and, and they see yeah. you as well, so yep. you're... You're doing that modelling, and it's hard to get out sometimes as a as a mum or or a dad. You know, if you're if you're at home with the little ones, mm. and it's not always so easy to get out, or you just you 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 know you have those days where you just know everyone needs to be home. But there are so many ways you can move at home, and we live in a generation now where we've got YouTube, and everyone puts yeah. exercises on YouTube. Yeah. You can find stuff for any type of level. I used to mow the lawns. I still mow the lawns. It's a great form That's, of movement. Yeah, because it's achievement as well. Yeah. So I'm achieving Perfect. something, I'm helping Michael, I'm moving, and I feel like I'm contributing to the family in a different way. And yeah. it also is a space where I think, because I don't put yeah. music on, yeah. I just mow the lawns. Yeah. And I just allow my brain to just think whatever it wants to think and just have a space to kind of clear out things that don't need to be there or dream about things I would love to do. I mean, the amount of projects Michael has on his list is <laughs> because I mow the lawns and I think, we could really do with a swing set. <coughs> I was like, is this your list or Michael's list? It's my list for Michael. Michael's list that you've written for <laughs> yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, movement is, I think movement is really what helped me quite a bit in my recovery. Just like you said, something, just something mm-hmm. small, something easy. Um, when Lucy was a, baby baby in the bassinet um i used to just walk to the back fence 
Great. and stand there and breathe and then walk back inside. <laughs> yeah, and don't laugh because that yeah. was you in that zone. In that zone. That was, that's yeah, all I could manage. Okay. And for some people it is the letterbox and, you know. Yeah, Yeah. cool. So many different forms. Um, but I think if it starts with the thoughts that then become the words and the, mm-hmm. you know, I, can cho- I choose to do this, um, it's not about having to feel like you want to always yeah. because we know that it's good to do stuff that are not, we don't necessarily feel like doing, but just helping you get out of that rut. Um, and maybe it is um, bringing a friend and say, hey, I know that I need to, I choose to do this thing. Can you be there with me while I do it? Yeah. Can we walk? Can we? Yeah. Whatever it might be. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Bring in your tribe if you need to, hey. Yeah. Oh, man. I like. So our time has come to an end. Oh, my goodness. I know. Goodness. I could just sit and chat. And well. I definitely can see Lydia will be a featured guest on this show Aww. because there's just, like, buckets of knowledge and great ideas. And I think what I appreciate you about, about you as well, Lydia, is um, that you are a positive person. And I love that even sitting here today, my thoughts have been continued to be challenged. And I think that's the wonderful thing about living in community and doing life with people Mm. is you challenge each other and you can inspire each other. And I think I've always appreciated that about you. So I'm looking forward to having you come on, talk more about nutrition, more about sleep, more about these things. I know I'll probably dedicate time to each topic and really delve into it. So thank you very, very much for your time today. Thank you for the invitation. It's been You're it's been really fun. And for yeah. me, you know, it was me stepping outside of my comfort zone and that I'm always after those things. So yeah. thank you for <laughs> You're <that>. welcome. <laughs> Anytime you want to jump out of your comfort zone. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. So that is the end of help today. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening and watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you guys have all been able to get some type of I forgot there was a camera. Um, some type of uh, nugget of gold that you can take and adapt and put into your life and just try something. Choose one one thing from this great list of Lydia's and and just try one thing and then let us know let us know how it goes so that is that is it from me today still working on my sign off sorry mum I will find something and um, (laughs) I will see you next week we will talk a little bit more about low motivation in the lives of some of my friends and what it has been like and what they have done to help themselves get out of it cool thank you